What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Aquascape tutorial. So today we're in the affectionately known studio number two. In the last video, I built a cube aquarium for my crystal black shrimp. And in this video, we're gonna be building a cuboid aquarium. So behind me is, I'll just show you, I'll just show you. Here is the tank. It's a basic Opti White tank, 45 centimeters across. I, what is that in inches? Yeah, 18 inches across and 13 front to back, which is 33 centimeters. Yeah, so a nice little size, 12 gallons, about 12 gallons, I think US gallons that is. There are other types of gallons, <laughs> which is absolutely perfect for the platies that we've got in mind. I've never kept platies before. It'd be really nice to do a little skate for just them. Uh, the light on top, now this is the super fish one we've got on a couple of my other aquariums, but this is obviously the smaller, I'm talking so fast, aren't I? <laughs> Let's just move on. As always, let's get the base substrate layer in. So you may have noticed right at the start of the video, I had these two pieces of wood in that aquarium, but I've taken them out because I need to put the, uh, the, you know, the base down first. I could put them back in and rearrange them around again because I'm not entirely sure how I want them yet. Get the base in first and then we can decide. Oh my goodness, I nearly forgot. I need to paint the black, the background black, not the black ground black, black back. <laughs> yeah, I need to paint the background. I'm gonna do it black. Uh, obviously this filter is gonna look really silly otherwise. You could put it on the sides, but then again, it's still quite chunky. So I'm gonna put it on the back, but with the background painted black, and then you won't really even see it. Black as well just gives really good depth to a tank. It's quite a small tank. So if you look above it, this is the better fish one. This is the better fish Hellboy. Yeah, his tank is nice, really nice looking. It doesn't have much depth though, does it? Um, this one next to it, the guppy one, does have depth, but that's because the plants are sort of creating that channel down the middle. Um, that I didn't want to go for a depth look with this one. I wanted it to look how it does. Kind of artificial, kind of like a show piece for, for the better fish. It's looking really, really nice though. But yeah, so down here, I want to create something naturalistic and deep looking. So I'm going to go for a black background. Remember that guys, if you want depth in your aquarium, then go for the black background. There we go, we got some really good height to the aquarium there. So I found that this like mix that I've got here is so good for adding height to any area. It's low cost because it's just, you know, normal gravel you can get from like, I don't know, I get us from mine from home base, which is like a home improvements place in the UK. I guess it's like Lowe's in the US, something like that. But the reason it's so good is because it stops sand from compacting because of the structure of it. So we've got coarse gravel, we've got aquasol, we've got the sand, and all of them together stop the compaction of sand. If the sand compacts, it gets anaerobic sort of activity building in it, which is fine if it's a deep enough sand bed. But when it's close to the surface and can be oxygenated, that's when you'll run into problems. And this kind of stops that. I've not got it in any tanks where I've used this sort of combination. Yeah, so a really good cheap way of building height. And you can see there, 
We're up to nearly halfway point at the highest point. It's gonna be so much easier to create height with all of our plants now because we're already at that starting point. I'm hoping that makes sense. I think that does make sense. Yeah. So it's now on top of this, we can now place our decorative sand like right now, or we can put some hardscape in and then put the decorative sand around that. It's up to you really. Uh, if you wanna use as minimal decorative sand as possible, it's probably best to put the hardscape in now. I've actually got quite a lot available, so I'm just gonna cover this whole section. Well, that was a nice and easy start. So I've made the mistake with previous um, skates before of, you see that gap in the middle there of the wood? I've just left it like that, maybe put some Java fern in the hole or whatever. And over time, stuff collects in that pocket and it does cause problems. So, you know, with my experience now of doing this so many times, I'm gonna fill those holes with more of this decorative sand. And then we could also plant into it as well. So that's all good. Also, I'm gonna build up that back area a little bit more than where it is as well. Again, to stop any sort of detritus just getting lodged there and staying there for a long period of time. It will still go there, but the fish and everything should push it around. Okay, that's looking really good. I think it's now time to add in some pebbles for some extra hardscape, but we don't want to go crazy because, you know, it's a small tank, isn't it? Just a few little pebbles for details and to break it up a little. Right, so that's like quite different from what you'd normally see in aquascaping, isn't it? Um, I kind of just placed them randomly. It's not what you'd traditionally see in any kind of aquascape, but you know what? I like it. I think it looks nice. I really like the different colours and everything, and I think it's going to look great with some plants in there as well. And speaking of plants, I've just taken delivery of some really nice Glossa Stigma. You can see it there. Oh, that's really, really bright, but hang on. There we go, that's a bit better. So yeah, I've got that Glossy Stigma there, and I've also got the Hydrocortal Japan that's maturing nicely at the back there, the small clover sort of leafed stuff. That will look really good as well. So yeah, I'm gonna start with some of the some of the Glossy Stigma in there, and just putting it in little sprigs about, and then it will spread naturally on its own as time goes by. Yeah, it's looking tidy. Yeah, not overdoing it, look. It'll grow quick. This stuff spreads really, really fast, actually. Well, it does for me, anyway. I don't need CO2 or anything with it. I don't use CO2 in any of my tanks. CO2 would definitely benefit in any plant. All plants benefit from CO2. Uh, they grow so much faster, more vibrant, but, you know, I'm happy with the low-tech approach. So, yeah, next up, we can add in some of that Hydrocortal Japan just in some of these gaps. I think it'll look really good, like it's sort of exploding out of it. And then after that, we can go Anubias and all those sorts of things and sort of work our way upwards. I think that's going to be the best way to do it. Ah, uh, yeah, and remember, this stuff dries out quick, so we need to keep it moist, like, really regularly. Every five minutes, give it a spray.
Okay, now for some mosses. So mosses are really, really good at adding like an aged look to the tank. So for instance, Hellboy's tank here, there was only a couple of little bits of moss and it's been less than a month and it's already overtaken the bottom. Not a problem if you keep up with your trimming. I always forget, but it does look really good, doesn't it? Look at the health of that S Repens there. Looking so, so good. Couple of pinholes at the bottom maybe. I don't know, or is that poop? I'm not even sure. But yeah, so we're gonna add the moss in now to this scape as well, keeping it low down. And also I'm gonna keep it minimal because it's just gonna overtake in no time at all. And I don't wanna hide too much of the hardscape. I really like those pebbles, so I only want a little bit on each one. No, not each one, but you know, around them. Okay, perfect. Like I said, just a couple of little bits here and there. It's gonna overtake so quickly otherwise. But next up, I wanna put some Anubias Bucephalandra up on this top sort of shelf, I guess it is. And to do that, we're gonna go over to another one of my storage tanks out here. So this top one here is what I created for the Epiphyte plants. Epiphyte means that they like attach the decor. So you can see here that we've got all this Anubias Bucephalandra in the foreground. And if you look, they're on those rocks there, or little pebbles, and I've just attached them with the glue in the same way I just attached the moss, which means that I can just move them wherever I want. Now that's the same for every single piece that you can see in this setup, apart from that Hygrophila pinnatifida in the middle there, which is just pushed into a gap. So we can use some of that as well. I'd like to use that. I've got some more in another tank because I want this one to grow a little bit bigger before we sort of harvest from it. But all the Java ferns in the back, again, they're all on rocks as well. I just tucked them behind that piece of wood. So it's kind of presentable still. But yeah, we've got loads to choose from. Really easy to do though. And it just means you can move stuff around super easy. And you can even put them in grout tanks like this as well. So that is it for our foreground and our midground plants. Now just peeking over the top of the Anubius, it works really well just to have a few little bits of Java fern. So again, for this one, for instance, like look at that. It's not overpowering, but hello buddy, sorry. <laughs> Keep coming back to him and not even giving him any attention. What a beautiful looking fish look. Is a Hellboy better? I've said Hellboy already, but he, that's the type. I haven't called him that, apparently it's a type. So like a completely red face with the black eyes. Oh, he's so nice. <laughs> He's doing really well in this tank. Um, yes, yeah, so like I say, the uh, Java fern, just peeking over the top a little bit. The two go so well. <laughs> He's back again. <laughs> They go so well together, don't they? So yeah, I'm just gonna do that as well down here. Again, something small, not too big, because it, it will overtake the whole area in no time otherwise. Java ferns grow quicker than you think. Everything grows quicker than you think <laughs> when you've got so many tanks anyway. So there you go, see what I mean? Just peeking over the top, it looks really nice. It won't grow too quickly. And also it's given me plenty of room down the back for our final sort of plant that I wanna put in that area, which is gonna be the Crypt Boralis, or Crypt Balanci, or Blantsi. I, I don't, the, why is there multiple names for the same thing? So down here is one of my plant grow tanks. This plant right here that looks really sort of nice and crinkly is the Crypt Balanci, Blantsii, Spiralis. And their look is the uh, Hygrophila pinnatifida that I want to also add in. Not all of that, because that's quite big. I do want all of that. Oh, we'll see, we'll see. I'll just put it in and see how it looks. Right, I think now is a really good point to sort of just fill it up and see if there's anything else we need to add or change, move around. Remember, we can do that. All that Hygrophila pinnatifida I just put in, all of it's on these little, oh, I've buried them, you can't see. They're on the little discs. So I put them on all inside discs like that, ceramic discs, so I can just lift them up and move them whenever I need to, just like any of the other plants as well. Awesome.
Right, we've got an absolute ton of bubbles everywhere. My water seems to be massively oxygenated. So look, as you fill it up, there's loads of purling going on. So the, not only will the plants be purling because they've just been exposed to so much CO2 in the atmosphere, they'll also would have caught a load of bubbles as well. It's all just going up everywhere. It looks nice though, doesn't it? Right, first thing I want to say is that I was holding my breath the whole time there that the piece of wood wouldn't just float up. I completely forgot to check it. It's river wood, so it's actually more dense than the water. So this wood doesn't float. I forgot that though, and for a while, I don't know if you saw, I kept tapping it to see if it was starting to float. If your wood starts to float, so keep an eye on it, you wanna attach a rock or something to it. I mean, I did bury this in a load of the sand as well, so maybe that's locking it down. I don't know, either way, who cares? It's in, it's staying, it's brilliant. So the Hygrophila pinnatifida there looks really nice. Uh, the one at the back is sort of pushed back a bit. I wanna bring that forwards. And I think I wanna fill out this space a little bit. I don't know. It will grow into that area, so I'll probably just leave that be. But yeah, definitely bring that pinata feeder forward. Right, we're almost there. I just want to add a little red accent in that gap there. I think that'll look really good. Just add another little element to the whole tank. There's a lot of green there, so we have one nice red focal point. And to do that, I'm going to steal... So oh, I haven't used the... Hang on, curtain. And to do that, I want to use this. This is Palustrius... Ludwigia Palustrius Super Red. You can see it's growing a little bit weird. You could do with a trim back so it grows back nicely again. The tank overall is looking really good, but it won't hurt just to trim it back a bit. It'll grow back even stronger as well with even more stem, so that's all good. So I'm back. Well, oh, oh. so I'm back at Maidenhead Aquatics because Matt's told me he got some awesome platies in. <laughs> right, I've just told Matt that I'm really after these ones here, which are red Mickey Mouse's, but they don't have them. What? Why are they Mickey Mouse? So if you look at the tail, or just before the tail, on them they'll have three black dots. And yeah, it looks oh, yeah. like Mickey Mouse head on its side. Right, <laughs> very tenuously. That's it, that's all it is. That is as, as exciting as it gets. Well, that's still a thing, isn't it? It is. Okay. It is. The kids love it. Okay, so I want to go for like, I think I want to go for a, like six or something of the same type. Nice, yeah. I think that'll look good in the tank rather than having like a mixture. What have you got that's uniform? Uniform. So we've got golden Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Golden Wagtails. We've got no Wagtails. Uh, what else have we got that's nice? Quite poppy. I'm gonna. I want something that pops against the green. Green. You got these, which are really nice, which are the blue and reds. So they got the blue side on the body. Oh yeah, red, yeah, actually, yeah. The tail, so yeah, I like really those. Nice, like a blue, blue coral. coral. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, they are really nice. That would work well, potentially. A little bit different. What are these, Matt? Because they're very nice. They're mollies. So oh, mollies. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we've got sword tails at the top. Yeah. Um, and then a mixed tank down here. So you have got white Mickey Mouse, but. Depends if you like white, plain fish. I mean, I do, but for this build, I want to go for something quite punchy. Yeah. So I think, uh, right, we'll think about it. Right, so I think I'm deciding on some of these really vibrant orange ones we've got here. Matt, how do we tell the difference male to female? And so, is there any rules of like how many you should have with? Yeah, you always want more females than males. Yeah. So two females to one male is just the best ratio, but always more females is better. Yeah. Um, with regards to telling them apart, it's really simple. It's quite tricky because there's a lot in here. But a female <laughs> will have a big triangular fin underneath her belly. Right. Um, so this one here will be a large female with a big triangular fin underneath her belly. 
then okay. the males don't have that triangular fin and just have a line that flows. Oh, just like guppies then, really? Exactly the same, yeah. So this guy here, this will be a male. Um, but yeah, just got to look out for that, really. That's the easiest way to tell them. Okay, that's brilliant. Right, bag me up. How many do you reckon is a good amount for the size tank? I've got the 45 centimetre. I think a good, you know, you've got to always bank on having a few babies survive. So probably... <laughs> Probably, I'd say around six, start out with that and see how many babies you get. You try and go for more, but it's just watching out for those babies and getting outnumbered with them. Okay, right, six it is, let's do it. Okay. Matt's also said as well, last time I was here, well, not last time I was here, it was a while ago now actually, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. Um, the gold laser quarries, look, they've got some little tiddlers in here. They're not nowhere near fully grown, but it's a small tank, so it's gonna be a good idea to put five of those in as well. They can keep some movement down on the bottom and stir up any mulm or detritus and get it into the filters. So they're really hard to focus on, but they are so, so cool. Not you, not you, Black Molly. <laughs> I do like a Black Molly, I'm not gonna lie. So the fish are acclimating really well. I've had them in this bucket now for over an hour. Uh, the room is heated, you see, so the temperature of the tank will now be the same temperature as that water. It's the most efficient way of doing it, really. That doesn't put too much stress on the fish. Put a little plant in with them as well. Oh, you can see them down there, they're looking great, aren't they? But yeah, so the, the tank, though, has been up and running for, oh, I'd say nearly a week now. You can see all the plants are doing great. They're all facing upwards. They're all going towards the light, which is just what you want. The water is crystal clear, doing really, really well. I've done water changes on this quite regularly. Um, at this point now though, it's time to add in some beneficial bacteria before we put the fish in. Right, there we go, we're all ready. There's nothing really left to do apart from put the fish in. Oh, exciting. I've, I've never kept the platies, like I said, so I'm really looking forward to seeing them. I have to say, platies from above look so, so nice. Come out, come, let me see. Oh, it's really hard to see, but yeah, I've been looking in the, in the um, bucket quite a bit and they're really, really good from above. Really nice shape to them. It'd be good in a pond, I reckon. Yeah, anyway, I thought I'd just mention that. Let's put them in. Wow, how much are they popping against the tank? They look so good, don't they? Yes, excellent choice of colour. I'm really, really pleased with that. I can't believe it. They're so friendly. They're like wagging. They look like little puppy dogs, don't they? Oh, I really, really like them. Beautiful colours. So vibrant, aren't they? I mean, they're not even coloured up technically. We've only just put them in. So they're, they're only going to get stronger colours than this as well. Be interesting to see what they look like in a good few hours. I find that with my tanks, because they're planted, fish color up really really quickly look at that that is so cool oh look at that beautiful absolutely beautiful i'm so glad i went with these platies i was going to get the uh the mickey mouse that were like proper red but that might have taken something away. i don't know this looks kind of natural this looks this looks real <laughs> right i remember we still got the coreys let's put those in as well Okay, so the Corey's not quite as confident. These two probably think they're invisible right now. The rest seem to run around to the back area. Actually, I can come around and have a look. Yeah, there we go, look, that guy, he's just made a little home for himself already. So yeah, I've often found that Corey's can take a little while just to uh, sort of come out of their shell, but wow, looking great. So what I'm gonna add next is a little cleanup crew. I'm gonna put in three Ottos and three uh, Mano Shrimp. It's only a small tank, you see, so it doesn't need a huge amount. Right, there we go, clean up crew in. Now it's worth noting, because I have forgot to mention this on other builds before. Um, now that we've got a clean up crew and it's a new tank, there's not a lot of detritus formed yet. Don't worry, that will come quickly with the fish that's in there now. Uh, but in the meantime, just gonna add a little bit of an algae wafer, just so they've all got a bit of food to graze on. But like I say, in no time at all, with a strong light like this, there's gonna be plenty for them to have for food. Also another note, I mean, it's a heavily planted tank, so the water's being like extra filtered, if you like. But every day now for the next week, I'm gonna be doing 50% water change and adding back in the beneficial bacteria each time as well. I always like to start my tanks like this. It just gives you really good chance of success. Stops massive build up of algae as well, just while everything's settling in and getting into that like sort of, sort of perfect ecosystem, if you like. <laughs> 